Hey guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOatman.com. Welcome to another episode of Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness, the weekly podcast devoted to all things spirituality and self-improvement. Today I want to talk to you about the fear of making change. Now we all have to make change in our life, it's just a part of everyday living. Everyone experiences the fear of change from time to time. It's when you let it become a habit and you become stuck in your life and you never make change and you avoid things because you're afraid of what the change might bring, that's when it becomes a problem. And even if it's not a big problem for you, it's just something that sometimes affects you. Today, I'm going to talk about what fear of change is, how it's keeping you stuck And what are some tools you can use to help you get unstuck? Before we get started with today's episode, I want to remind you that my new book, Beautiful Morning, is now available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Apple Books. It is a guide to life after loss. I wrote the book about my journey of losing my mom two years ago to pancreatic cancer. And if you've been listening to my podcast all along, you've heard some of that journey. But I also take the five stages of grief, and actually now they are considered seven stages of grief. And I talk about each of those stages, and I give you tools and tips for working through each stage of grief so that you can get unstuck and move forward in life and experience grief with a little more grace. So if you are stuck grieving for someone or you've ever lost someone important, pick up a copy of Beautiful Morning, A Guide to Life After Loss. It's again available on Barnes and Noble, Amazon, and Apple Books. Okay, let's get back to the topic at hand, the fear of change. The fear of change is also called metathesiophobia. It's a phobia that causes people to avoid changing their circumstances because they are very afraid of the unknown. Sometimes it's associated with the fear of moving forward, which is also known as tropophobia. This fear can be very challenging because it can inhibit you from pursuing your goals or from making any real positive changes in your life. You know, we know that a little fear is normal because our brains are hardwired to fear the unknown. And at one time, that kept us safe. A long time ago, when people were, you know, if we think back to the cave people time, If you approached an animal you didn't know, you could end up being their dinner. Or if something happened that was unknown, it might lead to a failure of crops and then lead to starvation. There were so many unknowns. And our brains are just hardwired to go to the bad because it kept us safe. I always go to the same story, but when my son was a little boy, he was about, he was crawling still. He wasn't even walking. So he was less than a year old, I guess. And he was crawling toward a light socket. And my uh, mother-in-law at the time was watching him. And she smacked his hand away instinctively and then looked at me and said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And I said, oh, no, you had to teach him not to touch that. I would rather him get a smack on the hand than be zapped and get electrocuted. So when we try to venture off and do things when we're younger, when we're learning and trying to find our way in the world. We often get told, no, you can't do that. Or in the case of my son, you know, your hand gets smacked because people are trying to keep us safe. We didn't know what would happen if we stuck our finger in that light socket. And what would happen is you would have been killed. So that fear is actually a healthy thing because it keeps you from doing things that might harm you. When, however, the fear becomes excessive and it is also accompanied by anxiety and strong anxiety, then it becomes a much deeper problem. If you feel like fears are holding you back in life, don't worry, you're not alone. That affects a lot of people. But also there are tools and things that you can use that can help you to release some of that fear. So again, don't feel bad about having this fear because you're hardwired to. You really are. And depending on how you were raised and things that happened to you growing up, I always attribute this to a lack of control. If you had a lack of control over your life when you were younger, to me, 
that often shows up as an adult in a failure to be able to make a decisions and a failure to be able to move forward or change your situations because there is this underlying belief somewhere that you don't have control over things. So why bother choosing? Why make a choice if you don't even have control anyway? Whatever's going to happen to you is going to happen. So making a decision is not going to change things one way or the other. I believe that's a deep subconscious belief that some people adopt. And if you had a really chaotic childhood and again, had a lot of lack of control, I think that that's one of the ways it shows up when you're an adult. It's common for you to be scared of the unknown, but a phobia is when something presents itself with extreme symptoms and they may manifest physically, emotionally, or mentally, and they disrupt your life. So how do you recognize if your fear of change is strong enough that it's a phobia and it's disrupting your life? Here are some of the signs. You might feel stuck or unhappy in your current situation, but you avoid creating positive change. You stay in failing relationships even when you want to leave. You don't bother trying to work for an ideal career. You just stay in a job that you don't like. You have extreme anxiety over what might happen in your future. You have an inability to accept life changes that are within or outside of your control. You refuse to stray away from everyday routines because you're uncertain what will happen if you don't. You reject invitations to events, to celebrations, family or friends' homes. You frequently feel nauseous or have indigestion when you think about change. You experience heart palpitations when you think about change. You find yourself shaking, sweating, or trembling at the thought of a life change. The fear of change can also be related to a fear of failure, a fear of success, a fear of loss, of self-doubt, or upsetting others. When your fear of change becomes destructive, when does that happen? There's constructive fear and there's destructive fear. The constructive fear is when the fear keeps you safe. And that may be not going with a stranger because you don't know them and you're not getting good vibes. That's constructive because you may walk home with a serial killer. You never know. Like that's one way our body keeps us safe. It becomes destructive When it's left unmanaged, and it may include depression, anxiety, you may feel isolated, you have avoidance issues, it causes extra stress, and the thing is the avoidance is what ends up causing more stress. You may use substances in order to numb yourself. You may stay in unhealthy environments or toxic relationships. You may even have suicidal ideation. And if you are having suicidal thoughts, again, you're not alone. Please contact someone and get some help. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 988, and you can call them for support. Just call 988 on your phone, and you can get help from a trained counselor, and it's free, and they also try to protect your identity. That's really important. Don't... uh, If you're having those kinds of thoughts, don't just brush it off and say, it'll pass. You need to get help with that. So what are some ways you can cope with the fear of change? Because I've just gone through what it can cause in your life. And it can be everything from making a simple decision on, do I call a repairman for this? That's me this week because my air conditioner went out. To do I change and go for a different job because I hate where I am? Or do I go back to school and work on the degree I've always wanted to get but never got? Do I try to start dating again? Do I get out of this bad relationship? There's so many things. It can be small to large decisions. If you're not doing anything or you keep delaying it or avoiding it, you end up making your life so much more stressful. Fear is... A terrible thing and it keeps you paralyzed. But staying in bad relationships and bad jobs and all of those things makes you miserable. So even if you're afraid of the unknown, the unknown is probably much better than where you are right now. 
that doesn't help you in the current situation, though, of making changes. So how can you lessen the severity of the sphere of change? How can you cope with it? One of the ways is journaling. Journaling, you know, I love this. It's always a great way to really look at what's happening within you. What is controlling you? What are the thoughts? What are, what's the programming that's just controlling you? And sometimes, and I was talking to someone about this recently, sometimes we don't even know and it's so deeply rooted in our subconscious that we're not even sure where it comes from. In those types of situations, meditating or getting a hypnotherapy session is a great idea because we can bypass the conscious mind and go deep into your subconscious where whatever is plaguing you might be sitting, it might be lying, and you had no idea. It doesn't even just come from this lifetime. It can come from multiple lifetimes. We carry those things with us. That's why it's so important to really get to the root of it. What's causing that? So journaling is a way that you can do that. You can journal without judging yourself, asking yourself, why do I find it so hard to make this decision? What is holding me back? What do I think is going to happen if I make this decision? What's the worst possible thing that could happen? Because oftentimes when we start asking ourselves those questions, what we begin to realize is that our thoughts run away with themselves and our thoughts become super irrational. And our thoughts take over and then we've built this entire scenario in our heads that really isn't happening. And it's not that you're crazy. It's just, again, our brains are hardwired for this and we're used to it. And we've had so much practice and we've been doing it for so long. We're wonderful at it. We are so good at it. We psych ourselves out because we've already created this entire scenario in our head that if I do this, this is going to happen. Like this, for example, would be a thought that I would have. So my air conditioner isn't working. I need to have someone come in and fix it. What if they say I need a whole new air conditioner and then that's a lot of money And then I'm out that money and then something happens and my house is destroyed and then I have this air conditioner, I'm still paying off, but now I don't have a house. But do you see how like irrational that became very quickly? And maybe I'm alone in being that irrational sometimes, but your brain takes it and runs with it. And then all of a sudden you're creating the worst scenarios ever, which are probably not going to happen. So... It's time to sit with those thoughts and ask yourself, is this rational? Why am I so afraid? What will happen if I do this? What would happen if I picked choice A? What would happen if I picked choice B? What happens when I do nothing? Really sit with those decisions. And again, meditation is also a really helpful tool because you can find guided meditations that help you, even just meditating in general, It stops the running of your thoughts. Getting grounded and being centered is one of the things that helps you to move forward and to be able to make decisions and to not be so in your head all the time anyway. You need to get back into your heart center and back into your body and out of your head so much. Meditation is a great way to do that. Plus, they have guided meditations and there are different ones. You know, you could look at meditation for fear getting rid of fear, a meditation for moving forward, whatever it is you need. Another great thing is to create a vision board. I love these because it helps you to focus on your goals. If you weren't so afraid to change jobs, where could you be in five years? You may be with a better job, one that you love, that you go to every day, making more money, and then now you have this dream home and this everything follows from it, right? Just from being happy. Create a vision board that allows you to imagine the new possibilities, imagining those things. And in the way that imagining bad things could happen and all of the worst case scenarios, if you focused on the good things that could happen, you attract that in. So instead of attracting all of this negativity, because it's what you're focusing on, look at your vision board and imagine the new possibilities for your life. What can it look like on the other side of change? It doesn't have to look like gloom and doom. It can totally look like an amazing thing. And one of the things that I really love, I 
was listening again to someone on TikTok and they said, what if instead of trying to say like, I'm a millionaire because we to manifest have to believe that we're capable of achieving this. And for most of us, that's, that's really not a realistic belief for us. What if instead of saying something like that, you said to yourself, thank you universe for showing me that this situation and you name the situation is already solved. Thank you for showing me that the situation is already taken care of. It's already solved. Because then you're opening yourself up to the possibility of the universe showing you how good it can get. Thank you for showing me how good it can get. Thank you for guiding me to the best possible things. When you start trusting yourself and the universe, it gets easier. And imagining all of those beautiful and wonderful things helps you to manifest it into your life and into your reality. Vision boards also help to keep you focused on this is what I want and this is what I need to do in order to get that. It's okay to talk to people too, to discuss your fears. Some people might have a similar fear. Maybe they can help you to understand alleviate the shame or relieve some of your anxiety. Another tip is to set mini goals. Sometimes if our goals are too big, they feel unattainable to us. But if we can embrace what we can do one day at a time or one step at a time, for example, decluttering a place is sometimes super overwhelming. My kids moved away to college and my son left his room. It was just a disaster. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to clean this because I wanted to make an office. It was overwhelming. But I just went in and took one corner at a time. Okay, I'm going to do this corner, then that corner, then this. Just did what I can each day. If you can break it down into bite-sized steps so that it's manageable, You don't have to eat the whole elephant all in one bite, right? We can just nibble here and there. In other words, chew off what you can handle. Take little steps, like I'm going to clean out this drawer. And if it's a big closet, for example, I'm going to clean off one shelf today. And then tomorrow I'm going to clean off the second shelf. If it's too big or lofty, it becomes overwhelming for us. And then we feel like it's unattainable. It's totally doable. You just have to take it one step at a time. Another thing is to avoid not making changes because that leads to a buildup of stress. It can also lead to harmful situations or circumstances. The fear of the unknown can provoke more anxiety than it's worth in the end. So you may be stressing yourself out way more than you need to be simply by not moving or making a decision. Instead of looking at what could happen in a negative light, reframe it. What could happen in a positive light? What are the world of possibilities that are open to me if I make positive changes? Also, another thing is to notice your history, okay? When you've made changes before in the past and they were positive, what happened? Because we know that's happened to us. We have proof of it. For example... The unknown to me was leaving a toxic relationship, and I thought, I didn't know how I was going to make money. I didn't know how I was going to take care of my kids. I did it anyway, and it was the best decision. It was scary at first. In the end, I was much better off. I found a better job, a career change, and one that I loved. I was able to take care of my kids. Everything worked out okay. The fear will cause you just to avoid things. You cannot do that. That stresses you out even more and it becomes a vicious cycle. If fear of change becomes so severe that it's diagnosed as a specific phobia, or maybe it isn't diagnosed, you just think that it is, it's okay to seek help. Therapy is a good way to get some help. Also, Another way, again, is what I believe is super helpful in any situation, which is hypnosis. Sometimes that fear is so overwhelming and powerful, and yet you don't know where it's coming from. The hypnosis can help you get to the underlying cause of it so that we can reprogram it. Here's the interesting thing. 
All of this, everything, is about reprogramming the brain. The brain gets stuck in these fight-or-flight modes or freeze. This is an example of freeze. And you can't move or do anything. It's because trauma actually changes the brain. And when we can do mindfulness and other activities, and you have to do it for at least 8 to 10 straight weeks, studies have shown that your brain can begin to make new neural pathways and that it actually, what happens when we are exposed to trauma is that the amygdala in your brain, which is the thing that senses danger, becomes heightened and it goes into overload. And then the prefrontal cortex, which is the thing in the brain that says, hey, this is not a threat, begins to underwork. So you've got the amygdala overworking going, hey, threat, threat, threat. And then you've got the prefrontal cortex underworking, not catching that it's not a threat. And that's when you get stuck in those patterns where, you know, fight or flight or freeze. We have to start reprogramming the brain. And it's totally possible. It's totally possible. When you start doing that and making those new neural pathways, the amygdala can calm down and the prefrontal cortex starts to kind of work again and take over and say, hey, this fear of change, all of these things that I'm fearing, they're not a real threat. Nothing like that's going to happen. I need to chill out. It's the thing that tells you to simmer down now, right? Like simmer down now. You need that. So we have to really start working on that. And again, the ways to do that, well, any mindfulness practice, but meditation, hypnotherapy, journaling, affirmations are great too. Doing those vision boards, all of those things can help you to reverse some of that fear of change. And again, if it is so overwhelming, then you may need to talk to a therapist or a coach or somebody who's able to help you even more. I do offer one-on-one sessions if you want to work with me. I do hypnotherapy. I also do Reiki. And um, I just work with people one-on-one. So we just figure out what it is that you need because every person is different. One thing might work for one person and doesn't work for somebody else. So we try to find the tools that you need that will help you to best heal in your situation. And if you want to work with me, you can go to my website, melissaopen.com. The offerings page will show you what I have available. And then you can purchase a session online and then message me to book it and we can schedule it that way. My hope for you is that you do not allow fear to take over and rule the show and run your life because that is no way to live. I said this in my book, Beautiful Morning, and I truly believe that it's the real deal. Everything usually boils down to love or fear. And a lot of the negative emotions really boil down to fear. What are we afraid of? We can't allow fear to keep us stuck because that is no way to live. You can't live your best life if you're stuck in fear and anxiety and paranoia and all of that. It's time to stop and break that cycle and to start living a life that actually feels good to you. It doesn't feel good to feel stuck. And you deserve to be so happy. You didn't come here to struggle and to be miserable. You really didn't. And if you are, then there's something you need to do about it. The change is in your hands. You have the choice. You can do this. Even if you need a little help, that's okay. Everyone needs help from time to time. All right, guys. And if you think uh, my book might help you too, you can always grab a copy of that on Amazon. I wanted to pull a couple of cards for you today just to give you a little guidance. So I pulled some cards from Angela Rose's deck. And the first card coming out is You Are a Big Deal. How can you step fully into your divine power? We often do not give ourselves the credit we deserve. You are amazing. You are a big deal. The action that goes with this card is walk into the room and fully own it. Own this day. How can you make this day yours? And the mantra that goes with this card is I am a big deal. And then you have what do I need to release? When we release and let go, we naturally allow the universe to provide more flow to us. Do you need to release a thought or a belief that is no longer serving you? Inhale and exhale. 
Let go and lean into trust. Trust your gut. The action that goes with this card is journal what you are ready to let go of. And the mantra that goes with this card is the wisdom of my soul knows the way and I will trust it. All right. I love that. What are we letting go of? We're letting go of fear and you can do it. I hope you guys have a beautiful and amazing day. If you would like to follow me, I do readings on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I also have guided meditations there. I have a guided meditation for healing grief, and it's a free guided meditation. The link is in the show notes if you'd like to download that. I have so many tools out there that you can use. Just check out my YouTube channel. All of my social media links are in the show notes. I'd love to have you follow me over there. And I hope that you guys have an amazing week. I am sending you so much love and light, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.